Hello there. Ark is in full swing. Last week we made a build about the Warlock. This week we're making a build about the Hunter. This one's completely broken and a lot of fun. You're going to really dig it. Without any further ado though, let's just jump into the build, look over all the fragments, the aspects, the mods, all that that you need to make this build broken in your next PvP session. As you guys can see, we're on the Hunter and I'm rocking the Assassin's Cow Exotic Helmet. Let's go ahead and read this exotic perk for you guys. Vanishing Execution. Powered melee final blows grant invisibility and restore a portion of health and shields. Finishers and final blows against more powerful targets increase the duration of invisibility and amount of health and shields restored. That's right, folks. So when you beat somebody with a powered melee, you get about eight seconds of invisibility and you become amplified because of the fragments and everything, okay? Now, uh, you also, keyword, get a portion of health back remember that a portion of health all right guys so now that we know the exotic helmet piece that we're going to be rocking let's go ahead and go over the aspects and fragments now we're using a gambler's dodge make sure you guys use gambler's dodge for the super it doesn't matter you can use whichever one you want but for pvp the arc staff's really just op uh, next up, we definitely want to be using Blink. If you're not using Blink, it's okay. But I do think that for movement and getting around and punching people, Blink is very OP. Now, this is where everyone's going to have the biggest uh, argument or debate in the comments. Combination Blow versus Disorienting Blow. Now, striking an enemy with this melee blinds them and amplifies you. So you just have to hit them. You don't have to take them out. And you become amplified. That's very OP. It has one minute... 40 second cooldown. The one that I'm using though, Combination Blow, a quick strike that temporarily increases your melee damage when defeating a target, stacking three times, meaning that your melee doesn't go away until you actually defeat somebody. Now, defeating targets with this ability also refills your class ability energy and restores a small amount of health remember before about the assassin's cow giving you a portion of your health and shields back these stack basically giving you a hundred percent health back every time you take somebody out which is making this very op but again this stacks with damage so if you kill somebody in two punches your third punch is going to be a complete one tap also if you're running this fragment down here taking melee damage briefly increases your outgoing melee damage plus 10 resilience spark of feedback that means if somebody punches you first you can one tap them with your punch now again going back to the gambler's dodge if you guys are using combination below and you take an enemy out you get your class ability back meaning you dodge again near somebody and get your class ability back now over here very very important lethal current after dodging your next melee attack has increased lung range jolts the target and creates a damaging aftershock that aftershock sometimes will take out the guardian damaging any jolted target with melee attack also blinds them so if you use lethal current it's basically like using disorienting blow the only difference is you have to dodge beforehand and you also get increased lunge range now over here we're using flow state defeated jolted target makes you amplified there you go these two together basically replace disorienting blow now if we go over this also while you're amplified your dodge recharges more quickly and you are more resilient while dodging and your reload speed is greatly increased so again you're harder to kill while you're dodging meaning you can get in there dodge get your melee back and hit it off as you guys can see in all the clips the next one i'm using spark of resistance while surrounded by combatants you are more resistant to incoming damage again uh it's plus 10 uh strength and there's a lot of times that you're near uh quite a few combatants and you take them out as you guys can see in these clips uh well critically wounded your melee and grenade energy regenerates more quickly a must have for a build that's melee centric or grenade centric this one you can use really uh you can replace but i needed a little bit of extra recovery you'll see why in a minute but finishers make you amplified that doesn't work in pvp but that's okay 
Uh, Spark of Volt is still very good because of that plus 10 recovery. In fact, let's go ahead and go over my stats. You don't necessarily need 100 resilience, but I wanted 100 resilience to be as tanky as possible. But you're saying, wow, why Kanye? 60 recovery, that's pretty low, but you have to remember that every time I finish an enemy off with a punch, which is majority of what I'm trying to do, I'm getting a portion of health and shields back from the Assassin's Cal and some health back from the punch that I'm using. So that recovery really is more like 200. Um, and we're using 80 mobility, but if you use a lightweight, which I don't have a lightweight on now, uh, earlier I was using the Callus Mini Tool, and the wither horde which is a good setup but i would actually use a lightweight up here and a risk runner and when you go punch people i would use the risk runner because if they're using arc they're going to be dealing less damage to you and then you also get the uh, arc conductor up and you can really just go to town so again i think risk runner with this would be the play but make sure you have that equipped or you're not going to get the damage resistance against other people using arc melees um, and again, um, really your, your grenade doesn't really matter on this build. Uh, same with your intellect. Um, definitely want to run a hundred strength just in case, uh, you, you need it to come back. But you know, um, in theory you could run much lower because every time you dodge, you get your melee back. But again, I like to have it up at all times. Uh, we're running uh, radiant light. We're running uh, focusing strike, fastball, powerful friends. We're rocking submachine gun targeting. Uh, remember to rock that enhanced sword. It still works. I tested it out today. The sword scavenger mod. I pulled up about 17 sword swipes off the ground. Remember, you can't take it off the wall. It has to be off the ground and you get a ton of sword ammo back. Um, this one right here greatly increases the ready speed of fusion rifle, shotgun, submachine guns, and swords. So I use this for the submachine guns. This one right here reduces melee cooldown each time you pick up an orb of power. And then last but not least, every time we dodge, we are going to be getting uh, even more melee back. Because remember, you have to dodge near enemies to get your melee back. So let's say you accidentally dodge and there's not any enemies back. This right here, Outreach, will give you quite a bit of class energy back. If you guys made it this far into the video, make sure you're hitting that like button, that sub button, that join button, and notifications on always. It really helps the channel out as I'm trying to entertain as many people in the world as possible. And of course, as a real life supervillain, take over the world. I've been your host, White Kanye the Great, and I'll see you in the next one. Chale way! Rawr. Rawr. Rawr.